Okay, the very first thing I'm also showing is the aloe hedgehog. Uh, one of the main reasons I'm showing this variety is uh, we have two separate canning oh, crops of this. Uh, the crop you see is on the far left. That's over there in R1. That's more of a cooler house. I got that as priority one. Um, it's a little bit more uh, tolerant to the weather we've been having. Uh, the crop you see this in the middle, unfortunately, is the crop that we have this in range uh, four. Uh, it was in a cold house, but that cold house was torn down and they moved it to a smaller section of the greenhouse. But unfortunately, it's still a little bit more warmer than we would want it to be. And the plants are already starting to bloom out for that variety. So for right now, I'm going to have R1. That's going to be, the like I said, the plant that's on the left. That is going to be priority one. Half the crops over there, half the other crops in the range four. Once that crop in R1 is done, I will switch over to this. By that time, we may wind up just uh, trimming off those blooms. Um, just let you know, uh, this is what the plant looked like. Hedgehog is a great variety because it's a very, very low maintenance plant. It's great for rock uh, landscape or more for rock garden. It's almost form of a, a succulent or a cactus family. Uh, it's got, the spikes are actually more softer than you most you expect for uh, uh, plants that's got spikes or needles on them. Uh, also good for those who are naturalists or, or, uh, or herbalists who like to create their own uh, medication. Uh, aloe is also one of the main ingredients for using, creating your hand sanitizer, uh, which was a very hot seller in 2020. Uh, the grass and the cola, all gold grass. Uh, this is the crop that we got in early in the spring. Um, as you can see right now, it is very well rooted. Uh, we did move the entire crop, or I did move the entire crop of this variety into current, which basically was like 5,000 plus. We still have 1,996 available. Uh, we're going to be bringing in another crop, maybe like a, a thousand plus still. So we still got a lot more for these to sell. So let's just try to jump on the ball and start selling through these varieties. Uh, great thing about the all gold grass is because it's a beautiful um, yellow, yellow flower or yellow foliage. Uh, it's more of like a weeper. Um, it's great for bringing up, um, biting up those little dark areas in your landscape. Uh, and it's one of our really hot sellers. We sell this just as well as we do red, uh, the uh, blood grass. The picture that's on the very bottom, that's, that's basically the entire crop when it first came in. That picture on the top left is what that crop looks like now. It is, it is it's coming up and it's got, like I said, really great root systems to it. And we still got more to come in. As you can see, we almost dedicated a tire house just for this variety, this variety alone. Next picture, please. Here is the ajuga. Uh, these are some new, we got these varieties in last year. Um, these, so this would be our very first year uh, selling this crop. Uh, all of it is well rooted. Uh, the Juga varieties is the fancy finch. I might say it, I want to say finch. finch, like a bird. Finch, finch. finch. <laughs> uh, a cordal canary, keep going. Uh, the Ajuga noble petite parakeet. That's another great variety we have here. And like I said, these are all new varieties. Uh, make sure you go ahead and sell through these. Well rooted. Uh, great thing about these, uh, uh, they're deer and rabbit tolerant. And it's varieties you use for uh, carpet, almost like a carpet for your landscape. And it's tolerant from people like stepping on them and everything. I wouldn't recommend doing that. It's more tolerant for that though. So it's a great thing for this variety. Like I said, four great, beautiful new varieties for you. And let's see where we can find these varieties from home. Uh, the next variety is a uh, uh, Pacara aurea. Um, this variety right here is also known as a golden ragwort. Uh, this one right here is a very has a very beautiful, almost like purplish uh, hue when it comes to the stems. Uh, don't be fooled by this because it has some um, purple, like starting buds for it. But as it progress, almost fuzzy too. That once it, as the season progresses, it will turn more of a solid yellow. Same with the foliage. During the early uh, spring, coming going into the winter, it's got more of that purplish hue to it. Uh, last year when we received this variety, I almost thought we got the wrong variety in. But then when we did research from it, uh, we found out that it was the crate. It's just more that this is what this plant looked at like at this time of season. Uh, it will progress as the season gets warmer to a more of a solid green and beautiful yellow flowers. Uh, it's also known that we have a mild winter. It's a variety that will also start coming out from the ground very, very early. So this is one of those varieties that you will have that will start blooming in the uh, early spring. It, it does best when you plant, plant, plant it in the full sun to part shade. But like I said, it gives you this beautiful stock of yellow, yellow, beautiful flowers. Next picture, please. 
All right, so I put up here a bunch of pictures of the iris that we put on this week. Uh, we put on thousands of iris this week, and I think there's only two varieties that are available still, the Sunfishers and the Caesar's Brother. We still have some available. Um, these are a little bit smaller than I think what they've been put on in the past, but we're trying to be really proactive so that we can get these guys out of here so we can get more plants canned for um, uh, summer and fall. Um, Okay, we still have some first colors left, some butter and sugars left. These are all in current right now. Uh, probably my favorite one is the top left, the purple flame and the Ensada variegata. If you guys have been keeping tabs, variegated plants are my absolute favorite. So the, the Ensada variegata are really nice. We did move, what do you think, 2,500 to current. We still have another crop of almost 5,000 that's gonna be coming up a little bit later. Those are still basically pots of dirt. So those aren't quite ready yet, but these are, um, what we have available still in all of our iris back in the cold houses. So these, if they're not sold, let's go ahead and get them sold. If they are sold, let's get these on trucks and get them out of here because we have literally like five houses full of them. <laughs> so lots of um, different irises available for you there. And then the geraniums, we have the espresso. The espresso are flowering as we speak. They're real nice can full, a uh, little bit of a darker foliage, almost a purple, maybe a little bit of a brown in there. Um, and then we have the rosans that are on as well. We still have quite a few of those available, a little over 1600. They're also can full, nice bright green foliage. Um, I think I saw maybe two flowers in the whole house. So they're not quite into flowering yet. The Euphorbia rainbow we've shown before. I think it was probably one of our first or second presentations for the spring. Um, these are, we have two different crops that we're rotating between. We have a really tall crop that you can see in that first picture there. And we have some that are maybe five or six inches tall that we're gonna rotate between. And we wanna try to get these out of here before we end up having to trim them if that's what we're going to end up doing because they do get very tall. They, they sort of take over their area. And right now they are flowering. So they get these really nice tall stalks of, uh, stalks of flowers on them. Um, they have a really cute red center and they, they just are absolutely fantastic. They're, they're very bright. Um, the foliage has a, sort of a lemon lime variegation to it also. And these are a really cool, interesting uh, plant for any kind of landscape if you need something that's a little bit different. Here is the Delisperma Desert Garnet. Um, these haven't quite opened to what you see on the top right yet, but they are can full. We have, the, they're extremely consistent. So anything, any kind of number that you have to get to your customer, they're almost going to look exactly the same. Um, like I said, flowers haven't completely opened, but you can see that really nice bright pink, almost red color there. And then they open to a white with a yellow center. Um, these are similar to a succulent. So if you have somewhere that needs um, something heat tolerant and drought tolerant. These are going to be great if you have a customer that doesn't quite want something like a uh, stone prop or a colancho. These are an awesome filler as well, and you're going to get those flowers from them. First up is the Amelanker Autumn Brilliant Single Stem 15 Gallon Tree Farms. Um, earlier this week, we discovered that we had them on the wrong code, so we fixed that. Um, I believe you said that there weren't many takers for the swap out. Um, from the multi stem to the single stem. So here's a picture for everybody to look at. Uh, same attributes, same nice white flower in the spring. They obviously they're not flowering yet. And then uh, you do get a very nice fall foliage with the dark gray and orange colors as well. And then next up is the Zelkova Wireless. Uh, I'm not sure if it's just a matter of people aren't really aware of what the plants are, what they do. But as far as alcovas go, this is not like most of them. because This is very short, but a very broad tree. When I first seen this tree, I just seen that little white, uh, white black picture at the bottom. And it reminded me of something that you would see out in like the African desert where they just grow out very wide. Uh, it's only about 20 foot tall, 35 feet wide. Uh, like the name says, they are great for going under wires, a really good city tree or a street tree if there are wires in the way of anything. Um, in the fall, they do get a really nice red color for the foliage. And you can see up there in the picture. So if you got any city plans, uh, definitely consider this for a great optional tree. And then the Zelkova Musashino, um, this is the exact opposite. This is a very tall columnar tree. 
Uh, it only gets about 10 to 12 feet wide, but will get 40 foot tall. And it is the same colors for the fall as the wireless, but another great option for another city tree. 